today we're going to talk about some minerals that might be useful in the management of pcos and one mineral that i think has kind of been overblown gotten too much buzz but before we start i want to remind you that this is just information i don't know exactly what's going on in your health picture and i'm not a doctor but i do want you to use this information to start a conversation with your naturopath traditional medicine doctor, your MD, family doctor, gynecologist, whoever it is that you trust to start a conversation with, that's who you should bring this information to. All right, let's get started. So the first mineral I want to talk about for PCOS is magnesium. So magnesium is something that in general, a lot of people are low on just because of the lower mineral content in our soil and some of agricultural practices, blah, blah, blah. So magnesium is important because it helps you sleep and wind down. It's important in blood sugar and metabolism regulation. It helps prevent fatigue. When you're low in magnesium, you can experience fatigue. And it is also a big key player in PMS symptoms. In fact, some uh, natural health experts that specialize in, in women's health are saying that most PMS might be just the result of low magnesium. So to start out, I would recommend or suggest that you might supplement with 500 milligrams of glyconate or citrate, so magnesium glyconate or citrate. Um, and I would take it at night because magnesium is um, a good mineral for helping you kind of wind down and relax. It has relaxing properties to it. I like to take mine at night, so um, that's when I would recommend you take it as well. Okay, so the next mineral I want to talk about is zinc. So um, zinc is a mineral that I hear brought up a lot in the relationship to PCOS. But again, it's important to note that um, if you're not low in zinc, supplementing with it may not help that much. That is kind of what I'm getting from the research. So what I've seen in the general population in the research studies is that um, Zinc, if you have low levels of zinc, it's associated with insulin resistance, uh, trouble with acne, and testosterone imbalances. So those all sound like problems that we face as women with PCOS. So if you're low in zinc, you could be just making that worse, all of those PCOS symptoms. Um, also, uh, it's good to note that uh, zinc is mostly lost through your sweat or if you're insulin resistant, that causes you to lose more zinc than you normally would in your normal processes. So maybe if you're a competitive endurance athlete, you need to start thinking about if you're getting enough zinc in your diet and if you need to supplement. And um, if you know you're insulin resistant or you're already being treated for type two diabetes, that is something to be on the lookout for as well. Um, most multivitamins are going to start you out with about 5 to 10 milligrams of zinc. That's kind of your low standard dose. There are higher therapeutic doses uh, that are start from like 25 to 50 milligrams. If you're taking a high dose you, of zinc, you also want to take that in combination with copper because taking high doses of zinc could cause copper deficiency. So for every 15 milligrams of zinc, you want about two milligrams of copper. And that's important to keep that in mind because you don't want to start fixing your zinc problem and then creating a copper problem. That's no fun. And I have uh, looked at a research study that showed that women who took higher doses of zinc had good luck with lowering their DHT. Um, so that's the, the um, biochemical that's associated with hirsutism and sometimes losing hair on your head. So that androgenic alopecia. So perhaps if you have like this really sort of high testosterone driven PCOS with the acne and the hair problems, zinc is something you want to bring up with your physician and see if that's like a reasonable thing to try. All right. So the last um, mineral I want to talk about is chromium. I remember a while back there was just tons of buzz about how chromium was going to improve insulin resistance. Um, so I kind of looked into the overall research review on chromium on examine.com, which is a very reliable source for getting your supplement information. And while there are some studies that say that taking chromium has helped people with type 2 diabetes improve their insulin um, metabolism, 
um those results are not reliable so there hasn't been like a consistent result across all studies and they're not significant so i'm not saying don't take chromium i'm just saying i think in sort of like the pcos world for a while it has been a little bit overblown and i'll link to that source probably if you're taking a multivitamin um you're getting a lot of your minerals covered just through that but um taking magnesium in the evening i think is a uh, is a really good no-brainer to see if it improves those symptoms we talked about and looking into what your zinc status is based off of your diet and maybe even doing some testing with a physician um, to see if that could improve your P your PCOS as well. All right, so that's it for today. If you want some in-depth information on supplements, you can go to my PCOS supplement playlist. I particularly recommend my long-form interview with Angela Grassi, who is a PCOS nutritionist and expert on all things PCOS and supplements. Uh, all right, so happy viewing.